LDBC. This is your boy Coach Sheldon Harrison. You're live, live, live on the Coach Sheldon Harrison Boxing and MMA Show Live. And let me tell you do something. Let me tell you do something right now. I just got through watching an interview by uh, Ellie Satback, and I give a shout out, a small shout, shout out to ES News uh, for having a, a candid interview with uh, Adrian Broner. And you know, Adrian Broner, you know, Ellie Satback asked Adrian Broner, who do you want to fight next? Who would you really want to fight next? And Ellie was asking the question because, you know, we all knew that he didn't fight Pacquiao. He turned down $4 million. See, we all knew this. So Ellie asked the question as if, okay, well, Pacquiao really off the table. He said, um, um, I want Pacquiao. Oh, really? You really? See, it couldn't have been me. Because I would have straight up, oh, oh, you really want Pacquiao? And I'm trying. I tried not to go in on Adrian Broner, but man, nah, man. This dude, I told y'all something off with this dude. There's something wrong with this dude. Um, um, well, I'm a better shopper puncher than Pacquiao. And, um, let me tell you, anybody can get it. How come Pacquiao couldn't get it? How come? You got four million reasons. I mean, people, I'm, I, I, you know what? Forget it. You know, Negro, Negro, you have four million reasons to fight Pacquiao and you turn down the damn fight. Let's get that in right now. You turn down the fight. Okay, four million dollars is more than, than any amount of money you ever got paid. And you said no. You said no. You, in your right mind, said no to four million dollars. And I'm not trying to hear this. Um, I'm worth ten million dollars. Um, uh, shut up, shut up, Adrian Broner. Cause you're not worth ten. See, that's the problem with you dudes. You know, I'm gonna give y'all an example. I fuss at these kids that I train. I fuss at them all the time because they come back to practice and they don't have the skill sets that we learned the first time. And you know why they don't have those skill sets in there? It's not because I didn't do a good job of showing it to them because I saw it when they left the last practice. They come back to practice not having the skill sets and you constantly starting over because they're not working on their craft outside of practice. See, Adrian Broner, you, you sound real good for the camera. Oh, you sound good. But see, it's what you don't do. It's what you don't do, okay? It's when the cameras are off. What are you doing when the camera's off? What are you doing? Because everything with you is a show. Everything with you is about selling yourself for entertainment. What are you doing when the camera's off? I got to tell these kids, what are you doing when you're not at practice? What are you doing? Because right now your technique looks like crap. Your technique looks like crap, and I can tell you ain't been working on it. See, that's the problem with this generation. This young generation, they want something for nothing. You want $10 million, and you ain't, boy, you ain't put the work in. You want to uh, prance around here and you want to have that Floyd Mayweather Jr. bravado. But, dude, you ain't fought the competition. You ain't been in the ring. You ain't had those wars. You have not been in the ring. And you can even, we can even say, but dude, you ain't even had the same level of opposition that Pacquiao had. You ain't had that level of opposition. You ain't. And you really think you're going to get $10 million? Hell, Pacquiao might not even get $10 million. What makes you think you finna get $10 million? I mean, dude, this is ridiculous. You know, and I, and I try to not criticize this dude, but that, every single time, man, you do something stupid. You had a chance to fight Pacquiao, remember? You turned that down. You turned it down, and that's just how that is. You see, man, it, it pisses me off that this dude got so much talent. This dude got so much freaking talent, and everybody and their mama saying that this dude got talent. But it's like, you know, dude's so dysfunctional, man. He can't even let himself just be real. He can't be real and go hit that gym and really dedicate himself to the darn craft that he say that he love. And that kills me. Oh, I love boxing uh, since I've been gone. Um, what, what these dudes been doing? What you mean what they been doing? What you mean? They, 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 they been out of trouble. They been in the ring fighting. I don't know what you been doing. I bet you Terrence Crawford would have jumped at the chance if he had an opportunity at, at, at Manny Pacquiao. Keith Thurman said, hey, give me that money. I'll fight Manny Pacquiao. I mean, it's unbelievable, man, the amount of opportunities that this dude keeps getting. And he squanders everything because he's not disciplined. He's not disciplined. He got the discipline of a freaking piece of a, a two by four. And they just sit there. He got the discipline of a damn tree. This dude ain't disciplined. All he got is a mouthpiece. That's it. That's all he got is a mouthpiece. Tell me, yeah, I'll get in there and I can stop packing, yeah. Um, because I, I'm, I'm more, I, I'm, 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 I'm more accurate than Pacquiao. Really? I, I think Pacquiao is more accurate than you. I think Pacquiao is more accurate than you. Man, all them punches you missed against Showtime Sean Porter. Dude, you missed so many punches. What do you mean you're accurate? Man, look, Pacquiao will get in there and swarm this dude. Hit you from every single angle. Yes, a 38-year-old Pacquiao can still do that to you. A 37. 
can still get in there and swarm you, beat you down, move out of the way, hit you from angles, be in and out. Agent Broner won't know what to do because Broner, you don't have the footwork to deal with him. You just don't. And he's not gonna stand in front of you. He's not gonna stand in front of you. See, I can't stand dudes like him who talk, talk all this junk. You had the opportunity. You had the utmost opportunity to get in the ring. So, I mean, tell me, what now? So what is it going to take for you to get in the ring of Pacquiao? Oh, is it $10 million? Do you really think that you are a $10 million fighter? Because, sir, you're not. And we can talk about how he'll sell a fight. Look, man, Pacquiao his damn self. Look, HBO, how you going to sell this? How you going to sell anything with Pacquiao? Hell, HBO don't want him no more. What make you think that you, 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 sir, what make you think you're going to get in there and be able to sell a fight and actually make it uh, worthwhile for HBO and Pacquiao to get on TV. I mean, people, dude, stop it. Stop it. You're making a damn fool out of yourself. Then that whole interview, it was a joke. You are the clown of boxing. And I'm just putting that out there. I, I, I make some Broner fans mad. I don't care. I'm telling you the truth. Hey, Jermona, if you don't even get in here and do what I'm telling you, I'm telling you, dude, your career, dude, you're going to be out of boxing before you know it. Boxing will survive without you. Boxing needs a guy like you. But see, we need your mouthpiece and your charisma, and we need you to go put the work in the gym. See, that's the difference between you and Floyd Mayweather. That's the difference. See, you ain't got no work ethic. You're, you're not disciplined. You'll never be disciplined until you get off your high horse and, uh, man, uh, 10 million. No, dude, you ain't earned it. You ain't earned that right. What make you think you're going to beat up? And, dude, the fights, the fights, the, the luster fights that you've been in, Marcos Maidana, I mean, beat the hell out of you. Showtime Sean Porter, beat the hell out of you. The two high-class caliber fights you've been in, and you and you you couldn't even win them. Emmanuel Transformer Taylor gave you problems. Paul Imaginali gave you problems. Are you serious? And people, y'all stop. Don't think I'm hating on them. Don't think. Look, listen. Understand and listen to what I'm saying. This dude is not wrapped too tight. He just not. And then you got Ellie setback. Start pissing me off. Uh, well, you know, uh, you know, and Ellie just kissing his butt, man, to get this dude going. And I'm thankful Adrian Brown had enough common sense to not fall for it. He said, yeah, you know, uh, you're a great fighter, man. You know, unlike Conor McGregor. See, Ellie, we know why you still salty. We know why you still salty because Conor McGregor didn't give you that interview you wanted. And he rolled off. That's why you still salty. So you're going to try to get Adrian Broner to get in there and do your dirty work and talk junk about Conor McGregor. I'll tell you something right now. If, I, if it's between Adrian Broner and Conor McGregor, uh, Conor McGregor is a better fighter. And I know it's two different sports. Conor McGregor is a better fighter. And I'm going to tell you why. Because he's not afraid. He's not afraid. And you look at his resume, and let's just say we're looking at his resume in reference to what's going on. I mean, dude, there's no comparison. I'm sorry. I'm not even a Conor McGregor fan. But at least I can actually real recognize real. Real completely recognize real. I'm sorry. And at least Conor McGregor, at least he want to get in the ring with Nate Diaz, the guy that made him tap out. I mean, look, Ronda Rousey ain't even came back yet. She got knocked out, and she ain't even back. <laughs> Conor McGregor gets tapped out, and he said, I want to fight him again. And he didn't even want to fight him at 155, a weight that Conor's probably more comfortable with. He said, look, let's get back in the ring at 170. <laughs> That's some testicles. But you know the problem with these dumb fighters? They don't have no kahunas. I, I mean, I mean I, okay, Errol Spence Jr. probably got some. Vassal Lomachenko got some. <laughs> Guillermo Rigondeaux got some. Whether, you know, you idiots will try to come on here and disagree with that. I don't care about y'all. Okay, this is my opinion. This is the coach's video. This ain't your opinion. And if you want to come and try to change my mind, I'm just going to ignore you. Okay, and that's just how it is. You're not changing my mind on this. I believe what I believe. Adrian Broner, you know what? And then people, you know, they laugh at this stuff. This dude is dysfunctional. And it, and it baffles me, man. Why nobody ever really call this stuff? Certain channels will call this stuff out. And I hate riding on Adrian, but I hate doing that. But I'm telling you, man, you had your chance to fight Pacquiao and you turned it down. You turned it down. I mean, dude, the biggest payday of your career and you turned it down because you thought that you'd be worth more than $4 million. On what planet? You're not. Hell, you better be lucky Bob Arum said $4 million. He could have said $1 million. Because honestly, that's what you're about worth, a $1 million. And I'm just saying that a $1 million is a lot of money. It's a lot of money.